So up until now, there are different reactions to the Prophet asking his companions to join him on this military expedition. So far, we've had a number of groups. We had one group of people who say to the Prophet that we want to join you, but we're not able to join you. They give excuses. They give logistical excuses. There are those who, who give religious excuses. So these are individuals that don't want to join. They're not interested in giving any support to the Prophet. They make excuses. Then you have the mu'mineen, the believers, who don't make any excuses. The moment the Prophet summons them, they respond to him. They respond to him immediately. They hasten towards the call of the messenger. And then there's another category of people. There are those who wish to sit on the fence. So you have three groups. You have those who are not interested in helping the Prophet. They make excuses, both logistical excuses and religious excuses. There are those who don't make any excuses. They are always at the front lines. They respond to the messenger's call. And then there are there's the third group who want to sit on the fence. They only want to make a partial commitment. They want to see what's going to happen. If the Muslims are victorious, they'll align themselves with the victors. And if the Muslims fail and they are defeated, they will align themselves with the munafiqeen. So these are those who want to play neutral. They don't they have one foot with the prophet and they have one foot with the munafiqeen. They want to sit on the fence. What did these individuals do? So they're not willing to join the prophet in his expedition towards Tabuk. So what do they do? They say, "Ya Rasulullah, we cannot join you, but we'll give you money. We'll financially support you. Here, take some horses with you. We have weapons that we can give you." Our hearts are with you, but we can't physically join you. So we'll give you some money and accept this financial support in place of our presence. Allah reveals ayah number 53 as a response to them. So these are individuals, they want to just give money to the Prophet, but they, they don't want to participate in the struggle. You know, there are some people, they just... They think you can just throw money at things. That all I need to do is write checks. That's all I have to do. And, that, and I don't need to struggle. So these are individuals that are offering the Prophet money. Ayah number 53. Say, Allah tells the Prophet, say to them, spend willingly or unwillingly. It shall never be accepted from you. Truly, you are a corrupt people. Allah is telling the Prophet that, listen, tell these people that Allah doesn't need your money. He doesn't need your weapons. He doesn't need your horses. He doesn't need your resources. Allah doesn't want anything from you. The only thing that Allah truly wants from you is sincerity, ikhlas. That's what Allah wants from you. And the reason why Allah wants you to be sincere is because this is how you mature as a human being. This is how you refine your soul. This is how you develop your soul. Money is not going to be accepted. The Prophet doesn't need your money. You need to participate and join the Prophet. You are the beneficiary. The Prophet is not a businessman. And this, subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, if the Prophet was a worldly leader, if he wasn't a messenger of God, a prophet of God, the Prophet would have took advantage. The Prophet should have taken the money of the munafiqeen. If he was a worldly leader, if he was a dunyawi person, the Prophet could have taken hordes of money, loads of money. But the Prophet declines the monetary contributions of the munafiqeen. He says, we don't need your money. We want you to participate willingly. We want sincerity. 
We want people of faith, people of integrity, people who believe in this movement. And subhanAllah, history repeated itself even after the death of the Prophet. When Imam al Hussein, salawatullahi alayhi, when he was on his way to Iraq, the Imam السلام, he, he had many resting stations, resting points. At one resting point, the Imam came across a man and the Imam tried to recruit him. The Imam wanted to join him. The Imam summoned him, but the, the man didn't respond. So Imam al Hussein goes to his tent. He meets with him and he invites him to participate in this sacred uprising. What does the man do? He says, Ya Aba Abdullah, I cannot join you, but I have this horse. It is the fastest horse in Arabia. If you find yourself in trouble and you need to escape, this is the horse that can get you out of the most difficult situation. So he offers Imam al Hussein his most prized horse, the fastest horse. In Arabia, what does Imam al Hussein do? Imam al Hussein, السلام, he says to him that if you don't join me, we don't need your horse. Imam al Hussein is not, he's not opening up a stable, he doesn't need horses. He says, I'm giving you, the Imam is giving him an opportunity to be a part of something that is greater than yourself, to have the honor of being among those who protect and raise the word of God on earth. Islam, faith, the faith doesn't need you. You need the faith. You need Imam al Hussein. Imam al Hussein doesn't need you. He's inviting you to be a participant. And this, brothers and sisters, believe me, this ayah, remember this ayah when the 12th Imam reappears. Whether it's in our lifetime, future generations, this ayah, is a very telling ayah. It's almost as though this ayah is foretelling, foreshadowing how many Muslims will deal with the 12th Imam. The 12th Imam needs people to support him. He needs people to stand by him. There are those who will say, Ibn Rasulullah, we cannot join you. Our hearts are with you, but here's some money. Believe me, history will repeat itself even with the 12th Imam. Now you may ask me, why isn't their money accepted? They're offering the Prophet these contributions. Why is it not accepted? Ayah number 54, Allah answers. وَمَا مَنَعَهُمْ أَن تُقْبَلَ مِنْهُمْ نَفَقَاتُهُمْ إِلَّا أَنَّهُمْ كَفَرُوا بِاللَّهِ وَبِرَسُولِهِ وَلَا يَأْتُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَلَا هُمْ إِلَّا وَهُمْ كُسَالًا وَلَا يُنْفِقُونَ إِلَّا وَهُمْ كَارِهُونَ Allah says in ayah number 54, the only reasons why their contributions are not accepted are that they reject God and His Messenger. They're not sincere. They say what with their tongues what is not in their hearts. They have no ikhlas. They come to prayer lazily. They are lethargic. And they offer zakat, they offer contributions unwillingly. This ayah, brothers and sisters, gives us the key, the miftah, for the acceptance of our deeds. If we want any of our actions to be maqbul, to be accepted by Allah, to be pleasing to Allah, we have to have sincerity. We have to be sincere. And sincerity, brothers and sisters, is difficult. Sincerity is not just to make aniya. Just because you make aniya to do something, that doesn't mean that you have ikhlas. Because ikhlas has to be there before you do the action. It has to be there during the action. And ikhlas should also be there after you perform the action. Now, before you perform the action, you have to consciously ask yourself, why am I going to perform this action? Is it for the sake of God? You have to check yourself. 
when you perform the action, are you looking for an audience or are you maintaining your sincerity? After you perform a good deed, are you broadcasting it to the world or are you keeping it secret? Or are you sharing it with others because you want praise? You know, Sheikh Abbas al Qumi, the author of Mafatih al Jinan, he, he published many books. He wrote many books. One of the books that he wrote, that he authored, was Manazil al Akhirah. Manazil al Akhirah, the stations of the hereafter. He wrote this book, and Sheikh Abbas al Qumi's father was not. An alim, he was not a scholar. His father used to pray at the local masjid, and the imam of the masjid, between Maghrib and Isha prayers, he would give a short speech based on the book Manazil al Akhirah. He would read a section of it and he would explain it. Sheikh Abbas al Ummi. his father would come home and he would tell his son, Sheikh Abbas, that, oh, my son. The Imam at the mosque, he's sharing with us some passages from a beautiful book called Manazil al Akhira. How wonderful would it be if you were to publish a book like this? SubhanAllah. Sheikh Abbas al Qummi doesn't, didn't even tell his father that I wrote that book. And his father passed away not knowing that the book that he was listening to was authored by his own son. Why didn't Sheikh Abbas al Qummi tell his father? Because he, did, he didn't do it for the sake of his father. He did it for the sake of Allah. He concealed his good deeds. And this is what we have to learn. You know, it's, it's tempting to share your good deeds. And it's, it could be good if you want to motivate other people to do good. But you have to always ask yourself, are you, are you doing this? Are you sharing? Are you sharing the good that you do because you truly want to motivate people? Or are you seeking praise? Are you fishing for compliments? And then the ayah ends with a mention of salah and giving, spending. This shows you, brothers and sisters, that praying in and of itself is not a sign of faith. Because Allah is describing munafiqeen. Giving, paying zakat, paying khums in and of itself is not a sign of faith. Praying is not necessarily a sign of faith. How you pray is a sign of faith. Giving charity is not necessarily a sign of iman. But how you give charity is a sign of, could be a sign of faith. There's a hadith and we'll conclude here. From Imam al Sadiq alayhi salam, he says, La tamburu ila tuli ruku al rajul wa sujudi. Don't pay attention. Don't pay too much attention to the length of someone's bowing and prostration. Sometimes you see people pray and they spend a lot of time in ruku, a lot of time in sujud. They spend a lot of time in qunut. They, they have lengthy prayers. The Imam says, don't pay attention to these things. These are not true indicators of piety. Why? The Imam السلام, he says, some people prolong their sujood and their ruku, and they pray because prayer has become a habit. You know, some people they have habits. Prayer has just become a routine, it's a mechanical habit to them it's second nature to them so you add, we ask imam al-sadiq ya ibn rasulullah what is the what is the sign of piety if it's not prayer pay attention to the truthfulness of their speech and their trustworthiness this is a better indicator of piety because munafiqeen also pray. But munafiqeen are not truthful. Munafiqeen are not trustworthy. Mu'mineen, believers are truthworthy and they are 
they are truthful and they're trustworthy. And even giving, just because someone gives, it doesn't mean that it's a sign of faith. How you give, the attitude that you have when you give is an indicator of piety. It is narrated that the Holy Prophet ﷺ was once given a sheep as a gift. The Prophet roasted the meat and he kept the shoulder and he gave the rest away in charity. One of his wives, I believe it was Aisha, she said to the Prophet, nothing has remained except for the shoulder because you gave it all away. So she protested that nothing remained except for the shoulder. Why did you give all of it away? Rasulullah, look at so so she was there was a bit of reluctance on her part to part with the meat. What does the Prophet say? The munafiqeen they give wahum karihun. But Rasulullah, what does he say? She says to the Prophet that nothing has remained except for the shoulder. The Prophet he says to her, No, you're wrong. Everything has remained except for the shoulder meaning what we have kept for ourselves is wasted what we have given in the way of allah that has remained and that will be preserved for us in the akhirah we ask allah azza wa jal to bless us and guide us and illuminate our hearts with the teachings of muhammad wa ali muhammad wa akhir da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammad wa alihi al-tahirin